Hi everybody! I'm Jackie with Jackie's Wreaths and Things. Today I'm going to show you how to make a no-sew wired bow. Okay, with your tutorial you have received two templates. What you want to do with your templates, they go edge to edge. You want to pull them apart like so until the lines line up. And then tape them together. Like so. Okay. That's going to be your bow. And then you'll do the same thing with your bow tail. Just scoot until the lines all line up, like so. Tape that together. And then what I like to do is take a piece of cardboard or um, poster board and make my permanent template. The other one I made out of foam board, either way, but just if you want something stiff, you can use cardboard, whatever, to make your permanent templates. Let's start by cutting our materials. We're going to use some cherry fabric for this. We're going to line this up. Now, when you're cutting fabric, you want to line this up with your bottom edge at the fold. That's what we're going to do. I already ironed the fabric. We're going to cut two pieces 11 inches. And then we're going to cut our felt. Set that aside. Well, then we're not going to set that aside. One piece needs to be 20 inches. Or excuse me, 21 inches long. Twenty one inches for the bow tail. There's our bow tail. We'll set that aside. And then the bow itself needs to be 31 inches. I really just, yeah, I did. I forgot to cut off my salvage edge. Okay. 
And then you're going to need felt. Now our felt, we're going to cut 10 inches wide. And you're going to need two pieces that are 31 inches long and two pieces that are 21 inches long. Now hold on to this little bit of felt or scrap, you're going to need it. Like I said, two pieces, 21 inches. There's our two pieces, it's 21 inches. And that's right at 31. So we need one more piece that's 31 inches. And we'll set that aside. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to, and we got two more cuts to make. You're going to need heat bond. And we are going to cut, to maximize this, we're going to cut three pieces that are 10 inches. And then we're going to need one piece, four inches. heat bond is 17 inches long. This 4 inch piece is going to make the gap for our 21 inch piece. And then we're going to cut it 10 inches. Now cutting like this is going to cut down your waist on the heat bond. Okay, the first 
thing that we're going to do is we need to iron out the wrinkles on the felt and the fabric. So this piece of felt, we're going to take and just run it like this. And then we're going to take our longest piece of fabric. You can't just iron straight on to felt. And we're just going to take and lay that over it so that we can iron the felt down and get the wrinkles out of it. And that's going to iron our fabric down at the same time and get all the wrinkles out of it. Let's get our other long piece of felt. Because see that big wrinkle? We don't want that. There's a big wrinkle. We don't want that in our bow. Put that aside and then we'll check our shorter pieces. It has a little bit of wrinkle in that one, so we'll iron that one down. Now that we have our wrinkles out of our felt, we're ready to put our heat bond on. We'll start with the shorter piece since it's here. Flip it bad side up. Scoot this all the way to the edge. And I'm going to kind of center it for a reason. And I notice there's a little... So I'm going to push that down. I don't want my iron to get stuck to that. I do this on high. The directions say on low, no steam. I haven't found a difference. I'm going to flip this around and now I'm going to take my 10 inch piece. It's my 4 inch piece to make up the difference. I want to make sure that they are butted up to each other. Be very careful, y'all. You do not want to iron this down on your... So if you have a little bit uh, hanging off, you'll need to cut that off. which I do. I'll cut that off in a minute. And now what I like to do to make sure that the heat bond is good and adhered is I like to flip it over on this side and iron it again. All right, we're going to set that one aside to let it cool off. Now we'll bring over our big piece.
Then once again, come all the way down to the edge. Flip it around. This piece is three inches too long, so we need to cut it off. Make sure you butt your edges up. And once again, I'm a little, just a smidge long. I don't want that on my iron or on my board. So I'm going to nip that little edge off. Now to avoid this, you can cut your fabric 32 inches. And then like I said, we're going to come back and make sure it's good and bonded on. Now we're going to set this one aside to let it cool and bring our short piece over and a piece of felt. So what we're going to do is put our felt down first and then we're going to remove the paper backing. Now the reason we're using heat bond is because we want the fabric bonded to the felt. Felt loves glue, so this will be permanent. So what I'm going to do is line my felt up with my heat bond. like so, then flip it over,
And then while this one cools down, we'll set it aside. And get our longer piece. Once again, we'll pull the paper backing off. What's happening is sometimes I'm getting a little resistant. If the paper's trying to tear, and if the paper tears, you kind of got to pick at it. So that's why I'm just going different directions to get that off. Get my longer piece of felt. Once again, I'm going to make sure that it is on top of the heat bond, which you can see because it's all shiny. Then flip it over. Take your time with this because you want to make sure that this is good and stuck on. And it is. So now what we're going to do is bring our other piece of felt over. And we are going to line these up. Now, believe it or not, despite the fact that my fabric is black, okay, um, I have a permanent black marker. You will be able to see the markings from your template. So we're going to do the bow piece first. Now what I did to my template, just to make sure it was consistent, even though this is the same and that's the same, I just did this for me. So this is the center of my bow. So I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to trace around the edge. And then you're going to take and overlap this on the mark. So the mark that you made, your edge is going to sit over on top of it. Okay. 
Like I said, believe it or not, you're going to be able to see that. No problem. And then kind of what you want to do is, if you're not comfortable with your cutting skills, you can take and pin this together in a couple of spots. Because you're going to cut all three of these pieces at the same time. And it's important that your fabric is wrong side up when you do this because you want all your pieces to match. Pinning is not my favorite thing to do. I have clips. I prefer to use my clips. If you can't find sewing clips these are paper clips little miniature paper clips they work the same and this is just to keep all your pieces stacked nicely and keep them from moving while you cut because you don't want that Then once you get them together, get out some good scissors, Oops. and you're going to cut right along your line. Now, I purposely developed this template. You will not be able to find. You'll get similar, but this is specifically for the wire that I chose for this project to make it easier. Now I'm going to take these clips because I want to make sure that this stays stacked. So I'm going to clip over here. I gotta hold mine up to get a better angle on it. And I'm going to put my clips because I don't want to lose my stack and have to iron it, or I have to line them up again. Now we're going to come over, make our bow tail.
line it up and then draw. Like I said, don't worry, you can see the black marker line if you choose to use black felt. I always take my template this way and flip it straight over. That way both sides are identical. When you draw it out, This is what it will look like so that you can see. Once again, you take your template, line it up, trace your line. This is one center line. That's all you need. Flip this over and go just over that line. And then draw your other side. Get a little bit of pin action going on. Because we don't want our pieces moving while we cut. I'm pinning just inside the bow so I don't have to pin or move my pins again. Because we don't want to disrupt our stack. I'm going to start on the end. I'm going slow on my cutting because I'm picky, y'all. I want it to look good. Perfect, almost. All right, then there's our bow tails. Okay. So now we're ready to get our wire prepared for our bow. Four inch chicken wire. You can find this on Amazon. I tried to find it local and I was unable to, so you'll need to order this off of Amazon. And the first piece, and I'm going to show you how easy this cuts. You don't need wire cutters to cut this.
but I'm not going to good my use my good fabric scissors either. And by the way, when you get this, keep the box because it makes it easier to spin this out of the first piece. <laughs> We're going to cut it in just 28 inches. kind of flatten it out make sure we got 28 inches and the second piece we are going to cut 14 inches Now we're going to get out our leftover felt and we're going to cut four pieces four inches Now it's time to get out our hot glue. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to take these pointy pieces. That way we don't have to worry about them sticking out again later on. And I'm going to put my first bead of hot glue right over those pointy pieces, take the sharpness off, then do another line, and fold that over. Now if I'm doing just a, if I'm doing a lighter color, I'm just going to use white or the same color felt. So that's to make sure that those sharp things don't poke through our felt. We're going to do the same thing once again to our longer piece. We're going to set our longer piece aside. Our shorter piece has cooled by now, and so we'll start with our bow tail. I'm going to unpin one side of my bow. Okay. 
We're going to raise that up. And what we're going to do is put a very thin line of hot glue as close to the edge as you feel comfortable. Well, I have my smaller hot glue gun out because I didn't want such a big bead of glue to squirt out. And then we're going to glue down our tail. Now I have my hot glue on high temp. And so I could lay longer uh, beads of glue faster. Now we're ready to unpin our other side. And we're going to insert our wire to the center. And we're just going to scoot that in there. And I'm going to start by gluing my center down first. There is no need to glue this wire down. It's four inches and it's going to stay centered. And that's going to be our bow tail. Set that one aside. And now let's get to work on our actual bow itself. Take one side of the clip off.
glue our ends down now. Are there other ways that you could do this and that would probably go a whole lot quicker? Yes, but it costs more and it takes more material. And to me, this is going to look just as professional as if you sewn the bow. Okay, so now we're going to take our wire and just like we did before, insert it. And once again, I'm going to start in the center. And there's our bow. Okay, so now what we want to do is create the center piece for our bow. So once again, we are going to grab our scrap felt. And we have a little bit of scrap fabric. And we're going to cut this uh, about four and a half inches. wide and then our felt just nip that off our felt piece in the center, we want it two inches wide. And then I've cut this approximately 10 inches long is how you want this to wrap around. So you're going to kind of center that. 
and just along the outside of your fabric edge. I'm going to put a bead of hot glue. And fold that over. Just be careful when you fold this over. The hot glue sometimes will come up through the fabric, so don't burn your fingers. Just be careful. And that's going to be the center to our bow and now we're ready to assemble so the first thing we want to do believe it or not you're still going to be able to see your line that you made that line is there for a reason it's your guideline for the center of your bow take a bead of hot glue right down there to your edge and then fold that over And do the same thing to the other side. Now you don't have to add trim to this or anything like that because you have nothing to hide. This is the bond for the fabric is permanent. It's not going to fray or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about that. Once that cools off, let's bring our bow tail over. And we're going to center that up, which is pretty easy because all of our lines are going to basically match up. And so what we're going to do is put another bead of glue straight down the center here. Flip this over while that everything's cooling down. Okay, so make sure that you've got your bad side down. Now before we go scrunching this up or scrunch this up just a little bit, you have to make sure that everything is cooled down. What I typically do when I get to this point is I'm making multiples, so I set this one aside while it cools and I'll get another one. Because otherwise if it hasn't cooled, when we go to pull on it, it's just going to pop off. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab and we're just going to give it a slight little scrunch 
just a little bit, not much. And then what we're going to do while we're holding that there put a bead of hot glue and then bring our tail up fold it over and hold it y'all if you see a little bit of glue scored out don't try to rub that off especially on fabric because on fabric it's going to turn white when you do that so just let it cool down and it'll be clear and less noticeable Now once this cools down, I'm not going to cut it directly. I'm going to cut just a little bit because I'm going to fold this over. Just a little bit to create a little bit of a seam. You don't have to. You can cut it straight across if you want to. I just kind of like to polish things up a bit, so I'm just folding that over. I'll put a little bit of glue there. Hold that fold over. And there to hold that one. And now your bow is all nice and ready to fluff out. Best part is because this is very stout wire, you can store these bow, bows flat and then there's no problem just rounding your edges back up. And because it is wired, if you want to, when you're designing, pull the tails down, you can. But there you have it, y'all. Look, so professional looking. It looks like you sewed it. Smoother shape. And it is wired. I hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial. Thank y'all so much for joining me. Bye, y'all.